Holy Name, Jesus. Uh, this morning, we will be reading out of the book of Acts, chapter 4, from verse 23, if you have your Bibles with you. Uh, this morning, this is after Peter and John were released by uh, the Roman gods and by the chief priests. And uh, they were given a stern warning and they were said, you are not allowed to go out and to teach anything or preach anything uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, so they left there. And this next section we are going to read is uh, a prayer that the believers together prayed. So the majority of this piece that we are going to read now is just a prayer. We're going to go through it together and see uh, what the Lord did in uh, their lives after the release of Peter and John. So if you want to follow this morning, uh, the book of Acts chapter 4 from verse 23, the Bible says, On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them you spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant our father David uh, why do the nations raise uh, rage and the people plot in vain the kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against the anointed one verse 27 Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and your will decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. So here, uh, Peter and John get back to the disciples uh, in their little community, and they testify. This is basically what they were doing. They were testifying about how good the Lord is, and they were placed before uh, the council, and the council could find nothing against them uh, but only by releasing them with a stern warning. And here everyone is praying together and saying, Lord, you are, you are God Almighty. Uh, you sent your servant, Jesus. Uh, whatever your servant, Jesus, did, we are doing now. And you have made a, a way for us now to boldly speak about the gospel of Jesus. And this is, um, this is fitting for what the word of God has prophesied, but it goes against what the chief priests had now said to Peter and John. They said, you must stop this. And now the, the prayer goes on. Uh, verse 30, stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So this is, this is the next step in the building of uh, the New Testament church because uh, getting to uh, from Acts uh, chapter 1 to chapter 4, the beginning of chapter 4, it was Peter and John that were going out and were doing the, the preaching. It was Peter and John that went out and was uh, performing miracles. And now the Bible says that, uh, again, it, it's, um, it's because of what the disciples witnessed. They saw Peter and John um, be taken away by the high priest and the uh, Roman gods and tried and released. Uh, with, only with a stern warning, nothing else. And now they have seen that, okay, this is what Jesus has prophesied and has spoken over us through the power of the Holy Spirit has manifested here now. And we are free 
to go and spread the gospel of, of Jesus. And this, this prayer and this section ends with the Bible saying, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly, which means that the rest of the disciples then went out and started preaching and teaching. Now, brother and sister in Christ, can you imagine at this stage 5,000 plus dedicated, anointed, baptized disciples of Jesus moving into Jerusalem and through Jerusalem into Judea, into the countryside and preaching the, the, the gospel of Jesus, the good news. And then it makes sense that um, 2,000 years ago, when they, they started the New Testament church, they started with uh, 120 disciples that grew to 3,000, that grew to 5,000. And today, the Christian faith on earth is 1.8 billion strong. And it just goes to show what testifying does. And to spread the gospel of Jesus and to speak the word of God boldly is to testify. We do not have to go out into our town and Bible bash anyone. We don't have to go out into Altham and tell anyone what they are doing wrong. They know exactly what they're doing wrong. That's why they're staying away from church. That's why they are staying away from reading their Bibles because they think that by doing things wrong, if they stay away from God, uh, God won't know about it. And, and that, that just goes to, to prove a scripture in the word of God where it clearly states that um, the things of the, the cross is foolishness to the world. They don't understand that by adhering to the word of God, by, by being obedient to the word of God, and by being obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit and and, and the direction and the movement of the Holy Spirit, you are freeing yourself. You're getting rid of your sin and your old life, and you are uh, adopting that new life that the Lord has, has given you. Um, because it is only in Jesus Christ that we have life. Amen? So this is what the disciples are learning now, is that we can just go out and testify. And, and we just need to testify about what Jesus did. When he was on earth, the miracles he performed and the people that he, he saved. And, and then when he was crucified and he, he rose again and he's, he's alive today and he's given us the Holy Spirit. And we don't only have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but we now have the power of the Holy Spirit. And the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifest in us and through us. And, and through that we can testify again to the people around us and to the next generation and so we are basically the disciples of Jesus walking on earth. We are basically billboards or advertisements for the kingdom of God. And, and a billboard or a, a, an advertisement never ever tells anything bad about you or about the company it's advertising. It always tells you something good or positive about the company and what that good and positive thing can do for you. Amen? And that is what we are, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are positive advertisements for the kingdom of God. That's why the word of God urges us to go out and to spread the good news. To go out and tell people the good news. They know the bad news. They are seeing it every day. They're hearing it every day. And for what we are doing here in our church and in Altham, um, we need to get out into the public the good news. Tell people about what Jesus has done in our lives. Tell people about what Jesus is doing in our church at this stage. Tell people about the healing that Jesus has given us and the salvation and the everlasting life. And, and through that, Tell people how much Jesus loves them. Because there's the majority of the people around us, family in Jesus, they, they don't know that they are loved. They don't know that they are loved so much that Jesus gave his life for them. So this is what's happening with the disciples here. 
And, and this is what's happening with us as well. And I want to encourage you as my brother and sister in Christ, please come and join us tomorrow here at, uh, at Eltham Baptist Church. Uh, we're finishing off with a three-week series on, um, on, on love and on hope. Uh, and, and so please, if you, if, if you come along, um, the Lord will reveal something to you um, that, that maybe you are seeking for. And, and it's, uh, we, we are, are basing this on uh, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 on faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. The three most important things that tie us together with each other and tie us together with the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and Father God. Um, so please come and join us. And, and you're welcome if you feel in your heart to invite someone, bring them, please. We will, um, we, we will welcome them with the love of Jesus. We will accept them as they are and treat them as part of the family. Amen. So with that in mind, please, let's just uh, end in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you again for a beautiful week. Thank you again for the teachings uh, in the New Testament, Lord. And, and as we are going through the book of Acts, Father God, we can clearly see that you have, have on black and white put down for us a perfect recipe to build a successful New Testament, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit filled church, Lord. And we know, Lord Jesus, that if we follow this recipe to the T, that, Lord, that you are going to do absolutely amazing things in us and through us. And we seek for that, Lord, and, and, and we are with anticipation waiting for that to manifest, Lord. I pray, Father God, that while we are waiting, that we will seek you, that we will seek to draw closer to you and have a a deeper, more personal, more intimate relationship with you, Lord Jesus. And that you will trust us enough to bless us, Lord, with the power and not only the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you for this, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God. Blessed be your name, Lord. We love you. We worship you. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. Uh, I hope you have a, a beautiful Saturday um, filled with the presence and the power and the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and until we meet again tomorrow here in our beautiful church together as a family, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.